This lecture is presented by John Moffat of Open Tuition. For other free lectures, visit opentuition.com. Okay, uh, June 2015, the paper F5 exam. We've been working through section B and now it's the last question, question of five. Um, let's look at the requirements. A, describe the main steps involved in preparing a zero base budget. Three marks. B, discuss the problems which Lesting Regional Authority may encounter if it decides to introduce a new zero base to prepare its budget for the coming year. C, outline three potential benefits of, use, of introducing zero based budgeting. Now, this is entirely written, 15 marks, and I'm not going to talk and talk. I'm not going to produce a full written answer. As always, you must read and learn from the examiner's answer. Um, and remember, she never expects as uh, you to write as much as she does. She's doing right so much because she knows people learn from it. What you're after um, is just the key points. A lot of people are frightened when there's a full written one, and don't be. Don't be one of those people who ignores it and just can't concentrates on the calculation questions. Now, because people are frightened and fewer people attempt the written, they are actually more generous with the marks. You know, anything sensible is going to get you some marks. Don't, you know, don't spend um, 20 minutes when you don't know what you're talking about. But at least write something for each of the three parts and get some marks. You know, even just getting two marks of a question. If you fell on 40, 49 and you didn't attempt question five, um, you were an idiot. Anyway, I'll keep this fairly brief. But hey, the main steps involved in preparing a zero based budget. It's only three marks. She's written it out in full. But the basic idea behind zero base, let me give you a, a simple example, a very basic example. Suppose we make desks. We've been making desks for the last 50 years and we've always made them by hand. Now, our normal incremental budgeting will say, well, we've always made them by hand. It takes three hours to make a desk. We're paying the workers $2 an hour, you know, and we'll assume we'll carry on doing it that way. And we'll say, well, I, can we go any faster than three hours? No. Right, we'll budget three hours a desk. How much are we going to pay the workers? Or maybe we'll put them up to $2.50 an hour. Fine. But it's assuming automatically that we carry on doing things the same way. That we carry on making them by hand. But maybe somebody's invented a machine to make desks. And if they have, wouldn't it be sensible? to look at the alternative ways to say, well, we can make it by hand or we could use machines and cost out the two, decide which is better. Maybe we should move to machines or maybe we're better to carry on making it by hand. But once we've decided what to do, then we'll go ahead and do our budgets. But it's when you're budgeting that we should think, are there any other ways of doing it? Make thy hand, use machine. It's budget time when we should think of the alternatives, decide which is best, and then budget on that basis. And that's what zero basis. And you look at all areas. Now, you decide which areas are more important. That's what the examiner means by... Um, decision packages. You know, if, 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 if we decide it was better to use machines to make the desks, obviously there's a big cost involved buying the machines. And there, there's always going to be limited money. And so we'd need to look at which areas were more important than others and decide, you know, where it was best spending the money. But again, zero base itself don't just budget assuming we carry on as we did before. Look what alternative ways of doing it there are. And choose the best. And then do the budgets.
So that's what it is. I'm not going to try and write all that down. B, discuss the problems we may have if he decides to introduce a new zero base to prepare budgets for the coming year. Now here you would need to start reading down the question. But really the most obvious, and I think the most important problem, is the, uh, the last paragraph of the question. They're about to begin preparing its budget for the coming year, which starts in one month's time. Zero has to be introduced in a number of regional authorities. Considering the demand on resources we face this year, we're considering whether now would be a good time to introduce it. Well, there's the big problem. It says we start in budgeting in one month's time. <coughs> Excuse me. The problem there, it's zero base. It takes time to train the staff how to actually do it. Think back to my desk example. The person I would normally ask to do the budgets for desk production is the production manager. Production manager organises the staff beautifully. But if it comes to considering Shall we use machines or shall we use um, do it by hand? The production manager is not an expert on making decisions like that. How's the production manager going to do all the costings involved? You know, how much the machine's going to cost us, how much it's likely to save us, and so on. He's not going to be capable. Unless either he has a lot of training or I move in as accountant because I can do the costings. But the problem I've got, I may be good at doing costings, but perhaps I don't understand the way we actually do the production. So it takes a lot of thought, a lot of uh, expertise. And on top of that, we've got to decide which areas are most important to look at and spend the money. Um, and so that's by far the biggest problem here. And it may not sound much for nine marks. She's written more. She hasn't actually. She's not written about much else. But just why it takes time and expertise to be able to do zero base properly. And the fact that because we're starting in a month, there's a question as to whether it really is realistic at all. And so in fact, you see, um, what I've said there takes time to write it, but that would certainly get more than half the nine marks. Uh, again, read what she's written. There's not actually much else there. Uh, finally, part C. Three potential benefits. Uh, it's more efficient. You know, I'm not going to keep repeating my desk example, but think back to it. We always want to do things in the most efficient way. Zero base forces you, not forces you, but a zero base approach makes you look at alternatives and see which is most efficient, which will save the money and so on. Uh, what else? Um, sorry, I'm looking back at the information. It says that recently there have been a lot of floods and things. The hottest temperatures on record. Well, there's one reason why what was a good way of doing things five years ago may no longer be a good way of doing things. Uh, with zero base, you more what you might call up to date. Uh, you can respond to um, the changes that have been in things. Uh, just one more. She wants three. She's listed several, but only. Any three of them would do. Uh, but despite what I said before about it needing training, expertise, help and things, it takes time. The fact that you're inevitably involving all the staff in doing the work and looking and coming up with suggestions for alternatives, that in itself can be very motivational. Uh, and obviously improving the motivation of the staff in itself can be useful. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I've not exactly written much on the screen. I hope it's of some use.
but for the last time, read and learn from her answer. Uh, but remember, you are not expected to write all that in the time available.